welcome everyone. Um, this is our um, webinar about uh, the ShapeDabber extension uh, uh, inside Forma. And today we wanted to go through, uh, you know, the, the workflow that we enabled with this extension on top of Forma. And, and we are really happy to have uh, Christoph, uh, a Senior Product Manager uh, at Autodesk. Welcome, Christoph. Hello there. <laughs> And uh, it's a great occasion because then Christoph can uh, take a few minutes to introduce Forma uh, generally and, and then uh, explain how uh, Shader fits in the ecosystem. And then I'll continue the presentation with, you know, how the extension uh, works and how it uh, fits with the, the other uh, Forma features. And at the end, we'll have uh, about 20 minutes, I think, for Q&A and, and some discussions. So I think we can get going. Christoph, I'll leave you the screen. All right. So um, first of all, safe Harvard statement. Uh, what we are showing here is in many ways still conceptual. We're experimenting. And the advantage of this is that uh, um, you can basically influence our direction with your feedback and take your comments. Uh, the disadvantages, and something that is worth mentioning, is that some of the things here might change. So where Autodesk is going is, um, is that we are looking into creating basically industry clouds for all three industries that Autodesk is involved in. So Autodesk Flow, Fusion, and Forma. So uh, for media and entertainment, and then manufacturing, and then AEC. Everyone that, that has been in the industry for a while, uh, you kind of realize the, the problems straight away, like with the current workflows and with current uh, tools that are out there. And one of the most important ones is the fact how fragmented the process currently feels. You have many exquisite tools that are very detailed, very complex, but everything is a little bit scattered, like transferring from one tool to another is very complex. And there are also many problems with collaboration. So like transferring the data and then working with multiple people on the same project is a, is a problem. And we were trying to address this with Autodesk Forma, creating a web platform that are going to span basically between um, different parts of the construction um, uh, between the construction, so it's kind of starting from planning, going through design, construction, and then uh, finishing with operations. So it's like a very long uh, journey that we are embarking on here, and we are on the very early stages of, of that. And it's worth mentioning that it's like due to the fact that it's extremely complex and it's spanning through many verticals and horizontals. Um, there are many industries even and capabilities involved. We are kind of embarking on the journey of creating a very interconnected system of capabilities that are going to kind of plug in and help you and serve you as tools. Uh, and we are looking into not only creating those ourselves, but basically allowing people uh, to create their own tools and then resell it to others as well. Since the vision is you can imagine like it's, it's very complex and it's a long journey. Uh, the phase that we decided to start with is the very early one. So we're start, starting with planning, early stage planning, and then we're uh, concentrating on this, uh, basically on the design capabilities. So this is what, uh, what is defined now as uh, for my initial offering. And this is what is available already and has been released about two, uh, two months ago to the, to the public. Uh, the reason why we uh, basically focused on that uh, that stage is the fact that we believe that you can influence your design in a very significant manner. Uh, the, the earlier you start, the more informed decision you can take early on, the more you can kind of shift the, the costs of making changes a little bit earlier. So it becomes more efficient as a process. Because again, as, as we all know, the more you focus, uh, the more you change at the detailed design or construction uh, phase, like it becomes extremely costly. Like uh, we are trying to basically provide you with, with the wisdom of, of if I wouldn't knew that earlier, I would make a better decision. We're trying to basically aim at exactly at, at that. To do that, we're basically trying to offer three sets of uh, main uh, capabilities, three areas that we are concentrating with. And I'm going to try to outline it in, in the product demo as well. So uh, the first one is what we call contextual data. So basically, we are trying to allow you to create your project very, very easily, um, and it's very fast. This involves not only like georeferencing and kind of selecting your area, but also bringing the surrounding data, roads, terrain, uh, and uh, and other data, basically to kickstart your project in a very, very fast manner, and uh, this we're going to see in a second. Second is a, a space of design and automation. So this is where many of us, like as, as architects or designers, we, we spend our lives, which is we are trying to show our design intent. 
so we are helping you with that uh, with a set of our native capabilities um, for either modeling or automating the, the space. And then it all comes together with our third set, which is analysis, which provides you with basically insights on uh, what, what we were doing in the design and automation stage. So we were getting insights, like some additional information uh, that alters your design. So you can analyze it again, so you can design again, and basically create this lovely instant feedback loop. That is basically, I would say, like one of the, the core values of the format capabilities. And so all of this becomes even cooler the moment we are uh, connecting to the third party ecosystem. And this is actually like my, my specialty, my, my part of the product is working on that exact area. So basically, uh, parallel to, to each of those blocks that I, uh, our team is creating as native capabilities, we are trying to provide you as users and also third party uh, companies with APIs and opportunities to basically extend your businesses and uh, provide the best tools you can for, for that particular uh, case. So for the contextual data block, we imagine people basically bringing their own data or even like local um, basic producers or people that are measuring and creating this data to be able to plug it in and resell it in, in Forma. Then for design and automations, like this is, this space is vast. There are so many great tools already and uh, everyone has a favorite tool. So we're looking into basically an idea of like how to allow people to, to create and author uh, their uh, their design uh, through other parties while not being disruptive to the exact, uh, existing workflows. And some of the examples here is our uh, Revit plugin, which is our native capability. Um, we have also a very early, actually just released uh, beta testing prototype for Rhino, uh, which you can join the program. It's a uh, beta testing program already in the, in the product if you're interested. Um, and then also we have TestFit that is also a set of like generative tools that are creating the geometry very, very fast. And then for analysis, so the third block, we also looking for the same approach, which is kind of creating an uh, analysis platform where you can either create your own customization of our uh, analysis that we provide you with, or you can build your own and you can either use it yourself or resell it to others. And it's very exciting to me personally to see how ShapeDiver kind of plugs into this whole picture. Because ShapeDiver and Grasshopper in general is this wonderful environment for that just facilitates coding. So basically, the APIs that we're exposing, that my teams are are creating, uh, normally would be reserved for for very advanced coders. Uh, now, basically, with the help of ShapeDiver and uh, the ability to create something in Grasshopper, is being unlocked for just people in in, uh, in architectural offices that are able to create their own uh, tools. And the two uh, kind of places that we are looking into are authoring environments, but also analysis. And we are very curious to to see where you uh, where you guys as users can potentially like uh, contribute and like create your own like suited basically suited for yourself tools to create something within this within this environment. I just wanted to quickly switch to the product uh, and show you how it all looks in action. You can straight away to see that we are a web web app. So basically, it's just a link that is open on your uh, browser. And I'm going to start going into those three blocks. So again, creating your project surrounding, then authoring some geometry using different tools, and then finally analyzing it. So uh, first step uh, in creating the project would be basically getting your uh, environment. So uh, you would go into library, and you would order data. Um, within this window is basically what we uh, we were talking about a little bit before. So you have a set of uh, different providers uh, that are giving the data to you. Some of them are um, free, some of them are potentially paid. So it really depends on like which type of data is being um, given to you and whether the provider that is connecting to our data ecosystem requires uh, the payment or not. So uh, you have like <laughs> all-time favorites with OpenStreetMap, for example, and that are that are always free and they are always available. Um, and then you would just like download the, the thing. It takes like depending on the size of the model, it takes like thirty seconds to sixty seconds. But I went ahead and I just to make sure that everything works, I just downloaded all of them uh, myself. And then I, we're gonna quickly place it into the project. I'm gonna place the roads. I'm gonna. Uh, get the property boundaries that we just acquired. And in this case, I don't need everything that I basically downloaded. So I'm going to limit my choice to just those three that I want to work on. And then I'm going to build the surrounding terrain. 
And again, here I don't need everything because I actually want to remove some of the buildings to make space for what we're going to be uh, creating in the later part. So I'm going to add this. And then finally, I'm going to just uh, specify my site. So we're going to be working on those uh, three parcels. So this basically within one minute, we, with keeping a little bit, uh, <laughs> which is me downloading some stuff before, we created our project that is already georeferenced and that's already uh, having surrounding. So this is the first part of Forma capabilities. Then if we went to go, uh, if we went to authoring tools, we have a whole variety of, of tools. I'm not going to go through all of them. I just wanted to show you kind of general premise of how it works. So I'm going to do what I'm going to draw. I believe it's going to be a uh, line building, which is our automation tools that basically, based on a line, allows you to very quickly create something within our environment. So in this case, it's going to be a very low uh, residential building over here. We can change the height of this like with a number of floors. We can change like what is the width of the building, what are the sections, whether we want sections or not. Uh, we can specify a function for the whole building. Uh, at circulation and one cool element that we can do is also we can add floor plans so for repetitive parts you can kind of specify if it's an apartment building or an office building you can kind of specify the, uh, the plan that you want to reuse for certain uh, certain parts so I'm not uh, I'm not going to dive deeply into this but basically what you would be able to do is like draw a core <laughs> and then uh, I should probably use shortcuts it would be faster but basically start quickly drawing your uh, your design intent with already a floor plan where you can assign what is a unit, what is not, what is core, and start informing your decision at, uh, in this way. So in this case, we kind of drew a repetitive thing that got saved as a floor plan. So this is one cool tool of how you can author uh, the geometry. Um, we have set off um, uh, we have set off uh, conceptual tools of like just modeling geometry within Forma. But for this crowd, since uh, again it's a shape diver, grasshopper, rhino theme, I think it would be cool to kind of preview what uh, what we were do doing recently with with this early access uh, rhino plugin that we are that we are doing. So I'm going to jump into rhino and I'm going to show you like the authoring capabilities on that side. I'm going to do the copy link. And I'm not going to go too deeply into what is done how, uh, but I just wanted to show you basically how the uh, how the process could look like. But the idea is basically that we want to use Rhino as a mode, like as a, as a native, almost native tool to Forma, where you can model with, again, your favorite tool and author the geometry in that, uh, in that manner. So I'm going to just orient my site. You can see that property boundary and then buildings got uh, synced to Rhino. Now they are just a preview, but we can bake it into actual uh, real geometry. And basically having this, we are able to start transferring the geometry from Rhino into our project. So in this case, I'm going to try to do like a very simple uh, commercial building. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the, the layers that are created automatically for the commercial use. And I'm going to just start drawing some boxes. It was a long time since I used Rhino, but I think we're going to manage at least use Rhino profit proficiently as, a, as an architect. All right, so well, I'm gonna just build something like this. Maybe push a couple of them back. And what I can do now is basically transfer this geometry into uh, into our uh, Forma environment. So if I refresh, uh, that's a necessary step at this point. You can see that this geometry uh, is being transferred into into Forma. So basically, we have like this this block. And we can also see that this monstrosity of a building is now taking majority of our residential space, which is uh, like uh, GFA space, which is one of the biggest uh, analysis that we and uh, that people run. Um, maybe I'm gonna just do a very simple modification to this, which is that I'm gonna just make a courtyard out of this. So I'm gonna use um, maybe like this. So I'm gonna at this point I'm just playing with with Rhino. Um, the difference just to show you an example of like working and operating on this model, we are able to change something here, uh, change this geometry a little bit. Then we can also 
just to <laughs> just to do something funky, do also like a sphere on top of this, and then push this into into forma. So this uh, together allowed us to to basically create uh, create some kind of a design intent within forma already, with being informed and driven with stats and some information about what is being created over here. Um, cool. And this is the second part. The third part is actually analysis. And I think we're going to see this a little bit more when Matthew uh, will take over the screen. Uh, so I'm not going to go into detail, but we have uh, a bunch of analysis that can that kind of plug in into this circle of like the, the feedback flow where you design something, get information back, adjust your design. So we have a set of analysis such as sun, daylight, wind, microclimate, operation, energy, noise. And then uh, we're creating other analysis and we are allowing others to to play with the environment themselves as well. Some of them are machine learning uh, analysis, some of them are not. So it's, it really depends on the use case and how the best tool fits, fits your need. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to give it back to, back to Matthew at this point. Great, thank you. Yeah, that's great. I even learned a few new things about Format today, especially this new Rhino integration is, uh, is exciting. Um, okay, so I'll just uh, dive right into um, my sides of the presentation. And I thought, because I think a lot of our attendance uh, is maybe not uh, so familiar with ShapeDiver, I thought I would quickly introduce what we do and uh, especially emphasize use cases uh, in the AC industry, which is what uh, we're interested in uh, today. So why, uh, why ShapeDiver, the, the main uh, remark that, that uh, sprung the, the, the creation of, of our company and what we try to do is that uh, we uh, noticed that there's a, there are few parametric design experts in the AC industry, but that uh, the work they do and the, 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 uh, the applications they build are uh, relevant for many architects and engineers and decision makers. All the stakeholders uh, can benefit from the optioneering tools that, uh, uh, that can be created using parametric design. And for this reason, uh, that's, you know, the, the simple principle behind ShapeDiver is that uh, it's a platform where uh, parametric designers can upload and share uh, their Grasshopper files uh, uh, online. So once a Grasshopper file is uploaded to ShapeDiver, it can be accessed in many ways. It computes in the cloud, so no one needs to uh, have Rhino or Grasshopper installed. It's just a remote uh, solved uh, algorithm. And it can be accessed in many ways, which I will uh, present uh, in the next few slides. But the, the two core uh, ideas behind the way to access these parametric models is that anyone even with non -tech, uh, no technical knowledge um, can, can access them and control them and have an inf influence the, the, the results through user-friendly interfaces uh, that are really um, uh, easy to use. And uh, the second uh, aspect is for, for those stakeholders who do work in design uh, software uh, uh, that are specific to their work, they can easily exchange data directly between the software they already know and the online platform and the shape that the models, parametric models that are uploaded on the platform. So to demonstrate that, I'll, I'll show a few use cases in the, in the AC industry. The first one is the use case, the simple use case of a self-contained parametric algorithm, which can be uploaded and uh, consumed and shared directly inside the ShapeDiver platform. So here I am directly inside uh, the ShapeDiver platform and this model that was uploaded comes with all its parameters online. For example, the base radius of this building, yeah, exactly, and uh, the number of sites, for example. And I can uh, quickly iterate through design iterations and then create safe states from, from them, share uh, my iterations with members of my team or externally, um, and also already perform some uh, analysis on the models using the attribute system. Uh, so in our case, uh, for, uh, there's a lot of uh, different metrics that are stored in the model and can be quickly uh, uh, inspected directly in the platform. So this is the first way that uh, you can share um, a parametric algorithm and, and give, give access to it with other stakeholders in your team. Uh, the second case is a case that goes a bit further where you also have uh, these self-contained parametric algorithms. But in this case, uh, uh, the, the uh, a company, Web8 engineers, use our developers tools to create a custom-made application. So around, again, one shape dev model, but uh, using uh, created a, a front-end application for their team uh, which allows to quickly iterate through um, design iterations, uh, perform some structural engineering on, on the concepts, and uh, and even uh, get some um, data about the embodied carbon footprint of the of the buildings that are created through the tool. Uh, 
So that's uh, also a self-contained application that is really used internally uh, uh, today by the by the team at Web, Web its engineer, um, and which uh, really also uh, shares the power of the parametric design to uh, to non-technical stakeholders. The third uh, ex uh, uh, example of that is even more extreme. Let's say it's, uh, it, just to show that you can also create public-facing applications. In this case, uh, for uh, this uh, architecture uh, firm who uh, who designs and man uh, manufactures uh, these modular houses, right? So that uh, here the interface is really meant for end users to be able to loop through some uh, options and topologies for for modular houses and inspect them uh, in in detail through sections before contacting the team for eventually starting a project. So in all these cases, we have uh, uh, three types of self-contained applications that are based on parametric models that are stored and computed remotely online. Uh, and the, but the last family of use cases, uh, of which our Autodesk Forma integration uh, uh, is uh, the main one we, we talk about today, is more what I mentioned briefly earlier, where uh, remote parametric algorithms are used to exchange data in real time and, and really as uh, uh, enhancing the uh, existing design environments with uh, added capabilities. So in this case, uh, I will uh, directly go to uh, the model we want to use for, uh, for the example today. Uh, which is, uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll start uh, actually in Shape Diver, in Grasshopper, sorry, so in Rhino and Grasshopper, where we have this relatively simple definition here, which takes as inputs uh, some uh, some sliders and a polygon curve. So I'll use this one that I have in my Rhino document, and allows to um, to loop through um, ba uh, basic topologies of buildings, so typical urban planning um, topologies that you might want to to play with and test with especially in, in such a context as former, and uh, with a lot of parametric ways to influence uh, the, the topology directly in the model. Um, and at the, at the other end of our definition, we have uh, some, some display components, which will be used once the model is online to generate the geometry that we display in the Shape Diver platform, but also uh, in the former environment, for example. So once uh, we have such a, a model in Grasshopper, uh, you can upload it directly so, um, here uh, using the upload, so it's a few clicks uh, through your shared data dashboard online, and uh, access the model through the, the the model view page I just mentioned, and you can see here the the exact same model that uh, with all the parameters that I defined in in Grasshopper uh, can be uh, uh, already uh, interacted with, uh, but in this case remotely, of course, on our servers. And the first way, so uh, just to emphasize uh, that uh, the um, uh, the, the, the format context is one of the many examples where uh, data can be exchanged between the shape diver model and uh, and um, and various environments. Is uh, that you can uh, use the desktop clients uh, section in the in in the platform, and here it found my Rhino session because I have a Rhino session opened and directly communicate between Rhino and the platform. So, for example, I can uh, use my uh, open Rhino. Uh, session here to, uh, so I can close Grasshopper, I don't need it, to define a, a, a polygon in, in Rhino here. I try to make it a bit uh, different than the one I already have in my documents, such, and then send it directly. And here the data is used directly as input for the remote uh, parametric model to recompute uh, a new solution and, uh, and display the results uh, in the online platform. So here that corresponds to my new uh, uh, my new polygon that I sent from Rhino. And of course, the inverse is possible to bake back the, the results in Rhino. So this, this double-sided uh, connection here uh, works a little bit differently if we go to Forma. And I think in this project, I, I already did the, the step of copying the what we call the embedding ticket from the Shape Diver platform and loaded uh, this Shape Diver model that I just uh, uh, showed as a generator in my document. So I can find it here in my list of generators. And if I uh, pick it, the building topologies model, I can then uh, design, so in this document, I don't really have any free spots, but I just pick one here. And use this polygon input that I showed in Grasshopper uh, as uh, using the polygon uh, drawing tool of Forma to, to draw um, a, a, an area and uh, generate the geometry that my uh, Grasshopper uh, uh, algorithm uh, generates. Of course, I can also loop through uh, my different topologies here. So I can switch from a loop topology to a grid, for example. 
and uh, and play uh, just just to show something a bit more parametric, uh, maybe with the alignment and all of the buildings here. Uh, oh, I don't think I changed anything. Yes, uh, just just to have something a bit um, a bit more interesting. And then um, I can so what? Uh, of course, I can loop quickly through uh, the results of my um, of my model here and. Uh, I can now, so that's what I forgot to do because I changed documents, define yeah, a site limit. And the, all the geometry that is gen generated through the, um, uh, the, sh the shader extension is compatible with all the analysis tool that uh, Chris had mentioned earlier. So here I can run an analysis on, uh, for example, this iteration um, and a couple other ones. And of course, the uh, the analysis has, uh, are performed uh, also remotely on the cloud, so I can reload uh, new iterations of my design and, and uh, launch them asynchronously. So I can launch several uh, several analyses at the same time. I can go back also to the loop and generate the last one, for example. And uh, and once I have all my uh, results here, I can use the so. What really where I think the, the integration between you know parametric design generated uh, through uh, Chef Diver and Forma and the analysis tool of Forma is the, the compare tool where I can really quickly uh, these three analyses that I just generated uh, load them in the in, in the uh, uh, compare screen. Yeah, that works. And then compare the for example here I, I did a Sun Hours uh, analysis right. So that's really uh, uh, what I think is interesting and allows workflows where uh, the optioneering uh, that uh, Shadow provides combines well with quick uh, decision making uh, in the early stage planning of, of a project. Uh, as a last step, I think uh, I'll give back the screen to um, Christoph and he's going to show us uh, maybe the last step uh, of this workflow where the geometry generated through uh, uh, ShapeDiver or the rest of the format tools can be uh, imported into Revit. I recreated something using your the the, uh, the ShapeDiver uh, plugin that's that I've installed on the on the project. And one really cool thing that I would like to mention again it has been highlighted before, but uh, the true magic is the fact that uh, someone who's a Grasshopper expert creates this tool uh, and deploys it into Forma. So people like me, that I haven't used Grasshopper for for a long time now, uh, are able to benefit from from that and actually work uh, further down the stream, analyzing and like creating different iterations with with the tool that was created like, specifically by by a professional, which is which is cool. <laughs> yeah. So I'm gonna the last step will be transferring all of this of uh, what we've done to Revit. I already opened a, a Revit uh, project. And I'm going to just send this uh, proposal to Revit. So this is our way of specifying like which proposal um, are you do you want to transfer? Since, since Forma works on multiple options, so you can create multiple uh, iterations, like for example with multiple uh, shape diver files of, of iteration, just to save your progress, uh, and then you can just load it into your uh, environment. So in this case, I'm going to just transfer all of this to Revit. So I'm going to load the proposal, and I'm going to ignore the newest version shape diver and forma it shows the shape diver webinar proposal that we are at so i feel fairly um, confident of what we are doing here and i would like to just take a step back while the proposal is Revit's environment is running uh, just to think about what we did which is that we've created context in just couple couple of minutes and then within a very short time, we played with multiple tools. We, we did some with our native format tools. We did something fancy with Rhino. So you can imagine someone, a, a designer, working in this environment. And then you have a set of inf uh, information that are generated by ShapeDiver as a tool that is natively deployed to cloud. So you can very quickly test, um, test your iterations within your project. You can then run analysis on all of those models. And then you can finally transfer all of those uh, elements to uh, to Revit, so everything is being loaded right now. Uh, it takes a while uh, since um, some of and uh, majority of the elements are going to be, I think, transferred as just meshes, so basically underlay. Some of them will be converted into actual uh, Revit elements, so it's just a matter of how the elements are uh, currently represented in the in the scene. And this is the step that takes uh, a second over here, so we can see that. The, Revit elements such as uh, walls, floors are being created for native, native geometry. 
Um, and this process is almost at the end and creating rooms, which I believe is the last step. And I'm going to just close the warning. And we can see basically that within Revit environment, we just kickstarted the project in Revit, having all the terrain, all the surrounding and the design that we've done with a lovely sphere from Rhino and, and Shape Diver script here also. Um, what is one last cool thing that I can show is that you can also use Revit once you load it, so like for example, Shape Diver elements or like your Rhino elements or our native element, you can continue working on the project that you've kickstarted with, uh, with Forma. Uh, so for example, if I were to now do something weird here, and let's say that we issue oh, selection in Revit. Let's say that we do something like this. We can now stream this change and stream this geometry that was created over here and update the proposal in Forma. So again, now all of a sudden Revit is uh, is your um, is your authoring uh, environment that is affecting the Forma scene. So you can kind of stream the geometry that you kind of uh, created in the previous part. Again, you could have done it with Shape Diver. You could have created Underlay. You created a real project out of it, but you can still keep iterating on this once the real elements wall floors are created and then represent them in Forma uh, to continue, for example, analyzing or influencing your design further on. Thanks for completing and, and giving us context for, you know, the, the Shape Diver extension and everything that Forma can do is, is pretty exciting, I think. Um, so, yeah, that's, I think we, we went through everything we wanted to say in the presentation and we have time for uh, questions which there are already uh, quite a lot so uh, I'll, I'll go through them in a minute we wanted to mention quickly i think uh, that from both sides we provide trials and and, and opportunities to test uh, to test forma itself shader itself and of course then the extension uh, between forma and shader uh, maybe uh, christoph let us know what are the possibilities to test in, in forma Absolutely. So uh, first of all, Forma is part of the AEC collection. So actually, most of the offices that have Revit or AutoCAD usually have collection, which means that by default, all the users in this organization have access to Forma basically for free, just within the uh, within the package. So I would, if you're thinking about Forma, I would first check whether it's actually not already available to you. <laughs> Um, and secondly, we offer if you if it's not, we offer thirty days trial. And I believe you guys as uh, yeah, you offer trial as well, so you can actually test the whole process yourself without uh, paying anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, Shaper side, it's uh, it's uh, similar. So we have several types of accounts, and uh, you can the the integration works from uh, uh, our Designer Plus accounts, which you can just start uh, trial for. We usually have two weeks of trial. But uh, in the context of Forma, if you want to test Forma, just let us know when we can extend to match the uh, the length of the of the trial in Forma, so you have time to, to really test uh, the integration. All right, so yeah, we have we have a ton of questions that more than usual uh, when I when we host webinars. So uh, let's try to get through them. Some of them we already answered. So uh, someone asked if the the data extension worked only with Rhino uh, or also with Revit. But then you showed at the end of the presentation that you also have this way to author and import geometry in Revit as well. So that works with both, um, uh, as you showed. Um, uh, then someone asked if uh, it's possible to get early access to the Rhino to form a plugin. But uh, I mean, so yeah, that's the case, right? The, the, the extension is available to everyone inside the, the marketplace. Uh, so the, you know, the extensions panel in the Forma project, and you can install yeah. it without oh. anything uh, additional, yeah? Uh, Precisely. Like our open beta program went live on, I think, last week on, on Friday. So now you can actually subscribe, and basically you can get uh, you get to go through the through the steps and see this early the early stage feedback um, integration that we've shown today. That you can just basically download it and then start playing with it. And the more feedback you provide to us, the better. Mm -hmm. um... Someone asked, and I think that's, I, I, I hope I understand the, uh, the question correctly. Uh, if the aut automation process through ShapeDiver uh, is only available for building typology, or can it be done for width, uh, height, floors, number of floors, etc.? Uh, and uh, so that's the case. I think I went a bit 
passed in when I mentioned, but all the parameters that are uh, available in ShapeDiver are also available. So the number of rows, the heights, the widths, you can play with the distance between buildings in this. This is just up to like the parametric algorithm that was created in, in Grasshopper. So all these parameters are available. What is not, uh, what, what we did not mention maybe and is not yet available, but will soon be because the team at Forma exposed more uh, possibilities through the API is to use the ShapeDiver attribute system to send attributes that are, that are then interpreted in Forma as uh, some of the um, well, so, some of the uh, some of the properties of the uh, of the elements in the format document. Uh, I think uh, I, I don't remember what the first ones were, uh, Christoph, that you exposed, but uh, we will add them to the to the extension, and then we'll be able to even uh, set uh, some things like building the usage, uh, building usage, for example. Right? I, I'm not sure if that when that's going to be available, but that's obviously the the. The point of the integration and when the integration will go uh, one step further is to be able to send uh, data rich uh, uh, elements to the format document. Um, so then we have uh, a controversial uh, comment or question uh, that it sounds very interesting, but I don't see the added value of adding ShapeDiver into format. I am a user of both applications, by the way. I could not understand what would should have offer something additional to the user of Forma or Rhino Grasshopper. I mean, um, it's a wide question, right? It depends on the, on the applications and the use cases. But here, what what we think is a is a clear uh, added value is uh, well, if you're already a user of Grasshopper and ShapeDiver, obviously you you are uh, you're a, a parametric designer, and for you, you can use your own um, uh, your own work in Grasshopper, for example. And directly, for example, the Rhino connection with Forma to generate uh, uh, geometry in Forma uh, directly from your local grasshopper, Rhino grasshopper, right? From from your local um, workspace. Uh, the idea of ShapeDiver itself, and then uh, uh, of ShapeDiver as part of uh, as an extension to Forma, is the idea to deploy these algorithms and make them available to anyone, including people who don't use Rhino and Grasshopper, or in general are not technical and not used to to work in this type of environments. And to be able to de deploy these uh, almost these micro applications, these micro plugins uh, that allow new uh, ways to to generate geometry and to iterate through uh, design possibilities that are typically not possible or or with uh, with more manual work with traditional um, you know uh, drawing tools uh, and uh, elements that are already uh, available inside Forma directly. I don't know if you want to add something to this, Christoph. I think I summed up the way you see it, but. That's a good explanation. I can take a formal stand on this one. And yeah. there's basically like a short and long term, I would say, which is that the the process, like the workload that we've shown, is we believe that there is something there for basically quickly assessing your sites. So basically, you have a set of scripts for quickly testing different iterations. Like you have your own way of distributing the building. And you can basically, through parametric logic, like deploy this tool. It's going to be quickly repetitive, like it could be uh, repeated between different uh, different projects, different users that don't have like the, uh, the grasshopper knowledge to basically uh, edit this. In a second, um, but the longer term, I think is also as interesting, and I would like, or even more, and I would love to get more feedback on this, which is that I see Shape Diver the same way as I see ability to extend capabilities in Forma in general, which is to be able to kind of plug in and do custom stuff within Forma, doing custom applications, the, using custom data that we cannot provide you out of the box. And I think this is where it could actually, like the more APIs we expose as Forma, like the more kind of ShapeDiver can plug in in this very easy grasshopper way to kind of continue this and yeah, generate not only meshes, but also like adding uh, additional value. We've mentioned areas, we've mentioned the functions. And this is just some examples of what could it be. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I've never seen so many questions in a in a, in a webinar, so that's uh, probably a good sign. Uh, a, a more commercial one than uh, what kind of costs are we looking at and levels or packages? So I think that's easy to answer on both of our sides. Uh, well, since since I'm I, I'm already talking, I can start. So the 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 typical cost for the designer plus. Um, uh, subscriptions that you need uh, to use the form extension in ShapeDiver is, uh, well, actually, no, I'm, I'm, I don't want to say something that's wrong because I think the price is uh, evolved a bit. So Ezekiel, if you want to take it, uh, it's, uh, 
we, we are, we're looking at what 150 per month i think for the designer plus 199 yeah. per month 100, 199 per month uh yes. to use the so because you need to um some of the features you need to also use the ap the, the shader apis and integrate into other uh, software so, so that's the basic cost on our side and on the format side i think we're looking at something similar i mean you explained already it's part of the of the suite but yeah, uh, to be honest, I would have to uh, consult my sales colleagues. <laughs> I'm so detached from the sales part. Um, yeah. but, so I don't want to make a make a guess, but it's, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's something we can easily send uh, links to, I think, uh, afterwards. Yes. And we just proved that we're uh, two uh, cliches of product manager uh, people. Um, okay, so uh, we have another one that's uh, format specific with the sun analysis. Is it possible? To generate detailed sun schedule per zone, whereby a zone could be a single window floor elevation. The target being to have a database of when a zone would be in the sun or in the shade. So basically, time time uh, constraints, uh, sun analysis. I think. A zone could be a database of when a zone to be. Yeah. So there are kind of two aspects, which is. Oof, that's a very complicated question that I don't dare to answer in a short short time. Which is, I think, like whether it's possible to kind of split the geometry and uh, run the analysis separately on on the elements, and then the second part of the question is whether we can actually make it into a, almost like a database. So that's kind of my my understanding of the question, and the answer is kind of, and I would definitely advise to kind of pose this question on our forums, so uh, so I don't go into detailed explanation right now, but we can yeah. basically have our analysis colleagues that will explain this uh, approach to this question in detail. Yeah, I feel like yeah, that's that's a good um, time maybe to say. Also on our side, there's a, a public forum where we we're pretty active and we can answer uh, all the questions we can't we don't have time to take today, but we still have a few minutes. So uh, let's take this one because I think I know myself the answer. Uh, congratulations! I have a few questions. I need to evaluate a parking strategy for mitigating UHI. How can I draw it in format without using a building tool? I think we have an answer for that, Christoph. Right. Uh, I mean, mitigation. What is a UHI? <laughs> yeah, this this I do not know, but I I know that you have a there's another extension for format that already yes. exists called Test. Yeah, there is precisely Test with guys uh, provided us with a custom uh, integration of their own, where you can basically just draw a parking uh, tool that basically provides you the generation of of um, the most optimal parking spaces, and they are also open for feedback. I'm not sure about the UHI. I'm not familiar with that term, but probably if you explain a little bit more into detail, or uh, they would be quite happy to, to hear the, uh, to kind of brainstorm on how to implement it potentially. Right. And as mentioned in the comment at the end, uh, you also know that you can upload it from Rhino or Revit uh, with, the, with the integration tools. Um, can we use the shape driver trials for the competition for the design competition? Yes, of course. As as Christoph mentioned, uh, you're welcome to, and I, I, we think it would be a very nice idea. Um, then I think I, I don't. I'm trying to select <laughs> uh, which questions uh, we can answer in time here. I know that Forma has a free student license option as part of Autodesk. Does shape driver have something similar? Yeah, for uh, you can contact us. For students and uh, academic licenses in general, we do provide some options. So please, uh, if you have a project where you want to use Forma and and Shape Diver as part of your uh, studies, then uh, we'll be happy to uh, give you some access. Um, I have issues when I try to use um, Rhino inside Revit plugins. It does not work. And it's not. I'm not sure that's relevant. I mean, Rhino inside Revit is. Uh, uh, as part of Revit, so maybe, maybe it's. I think it should be possible to use Rhino inside Revit to generate from Grasshopper uh, uh, geometry inside Revit, and then uh, use it to send it to to Forma. Uh, but then you should probably use the. In in this case, you should probably use the Revit forum uh, to uh, solve this issue. Uh, then other questions: Is it possible to export to Rhino or just to Revit? So I think maybe you didn't show this uh, side. I, I, but actually, I think you did, right? So all the mm -hmm. geometry generated so, inside Forma can go to Rhino as well, right? Yeah. So uh, actually, the approach here that we take is that we treat Rhino as a modeling tool, 
which is that we assume that we you want to use your favorite tool to model and format to get your analysis. So therefore, we're getting you just context of the of the site and terrain. So this thing you can stream easily, but currently we don't support bringing your geometry like your your design in format. But I would be very happy to hear if if you see this within your workflow mm -hmm. and how. Um, and let's take, I think that's uh, almost the last one. Uh, we do a lot of design with drawings. We need to make parametric. Does this limit the use or can drawing frames and drawings be made parametric using by integrating this with Autodac, AutoCAD or Revit? So I think, um, yeah, I'm not sure I, I get the, the question entirely. So what, what we saw here, and I, I went a bit um, quick with it, is that if you use, um, if you if you use shape diver inside inside forma the shape diver application can have uh, traditional parameters such as sliders uh, value list etc as inputs but also use geometry as inputs and in the context of forma we interpret uh, a polygon the curve input as a way to draw a polygon on the in the format document and use it to generate so as, as one of the uh, inputs that generates geometry uh, inside the grasshopper uh, definition um i i think I, I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by integrating this with AutoCAD or Revit, uh, but what, uh, yes, exactly. Uh, we, we, and and I, I think we're running a bit out of time to answer the most complex questions here, but as, you know, just to repeat it, and as Christoph said it, uh, we both have uh, uh, ShapeDiver and Forma public forums where we're really happy to take these questions. And it's maybe a nice um, conclusion to all of this to repeat what Christoph had said a couple of times that uh, a lot of features of Forma and you know the, the ShapeDiver extension to Forma in particular are uh, in beta phase. They are constantly being improved and at, at quite a high speed uh, these days. And that all the feedback and the, the comments that we get and the, uh, yeah, the, even the bug reports uh, uh, especially uh, that we get are used and we can react on them and we, we are happy to improve the, the, the products um, that we discussed today uh, from the feedback. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know. We're also very responsive, I think. On yeah, and I think social that's... media. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and and like 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 Christoph said also, right? That's uh, um, that's uh, the fact that it's beta means it's not a final product, but it also means that all the feedback uh, that we get uh, ends up being um, having a real influence on on how the products uh, are developed. So uh, please please do, and uh, we're we're happy to to hear from you. Um, that's it on my side. I don't know if you have like a last word also, Christoph. Um, to be honest, uh, maybe one thing, which is that Ben posted a link to our uh, from our compass. So again, if you want to play around with the solution and then also have a chance to, to win something for it, I think it's a great opportunity. But other than this, like, again, provide us with uh, with your thoughts. Uh, just just write to us. Say what you basically what you require. For your workflows, we're very eager to kind of engage and see how to how to make industry a little bit better. Yeah. Thank you everyone then. And goodbye. Have a nice evening or morning for some of you. And uh, yeah, thank you for attending. Thank you so much. Bye bye.